Hey residents of Meeple Town, today we are looking at the shores of Tripoli. It is the early 1800s and we have the United, State, uh, United States Navy and Marine Corps versus the Pirates of Tripoli. They're going to be battling it out in this two-player game. You can also play solo, but we're going to be looking at the two-player option. Let's get to the table, check out Shores of Tripoli. Okay, here is the setup for Shores of Tripoli. We have the American players that are gonna be kind of set up over here. They're gonna represent blue on the board, but they'll also have um, allies uh, with the, the Swedish allies and then um, uh, white as well. The uh, uh, Tripolitan army, excuse me, is gonna be represented by red. They've got some um, Corsairs here in the Tripoli Harbor and then have some ground troops elsewhere and they also have these orange allies as well. So what are we trying to do in this game? Well, this is a card based game and each player is going to have uh, different objectives that they're trying to complete. So for example, for the uh, Tripoli player, what they are trying to do is they're trying to get 12 gold and that's what they're gonna be doing early on, trying to win the game early on. That's kind of their thing. They can also win by destroying, uh, ca capturing and destroying uh, four of the American frigates. They would take them to their side and once they are able to get four of those, they would win as well. They also have a, a, a late game winning condition um, by defeating Hammett's army, but those are the things that they're trying to do early on. With the, the, uh, the American army, what they're trying to do is um, one of two things, and theirs are more late game uh, options uh, as well as that, you know, the, the Tripoli player has the one late game option. The American player is, is really trying to go in this for the long haul and to be able to uh, capture Tripoli and install their own leader. And the, another option is to create a favorable tr peace treaty for them. And this is something that would have to happen. This is a card that you would draw, but I put it on top just so we could see it. Um, so what this means is, is uh, if it's if you meet all of these conditions, so if it's the fall of 1805 or later, the city of Algiers, Tan, uh, Tangiers, Tunis, and uh, are all at peace. City of Dern has been captured, and then there are no Tripolitan frigates in the harbor of Tripoli. So if you are able to do this at the end of the game, meet all of these conditions, then you will win. So as you can imagine, the Tripoli player doesn't want to delay the game, what they're gonna try to do is wrap the game up. Now I'm gonna show off, this is a, a two player or a solo game, and I'm gonna show off the two player game just because uh, I believe that, for me, that's my preference, but also just to kind of show off um, how that would play. And I'm just gonna show a few rounds and then give some thoughts on the game. So the American player is going to start off, they'll take an action and then move, uh, sorry, take an action, Tripoli will take an action, move on to summer. And so you're gonna keep doing that for the first year and then move through these years uh, to continue through the game. So the American player is gonna be the first one to go. And what they're going to want to do probably, maybe right off the start, is to move over to the patrol zone in Tripoli so that Tripoli is not able to do pirate raids to gain a bunch of gold. So I'll explain what that looks like on their turn. But we have six cards in our hand and I can either play uh, a card to build a gunboat, put it in Malta. I can play a card and move two frigates. Or I can play a card for the event. And if this is an event that is a um, uh, kind of a one-time thing, then you're going to just use that event and it be done for the rest of the game. If you ever played anything like Watergate or anything like that, uh, 13 Days kind of has that same feel of uh, card play there. So what is the American player going to do? Oh, I didn't mention we each also have three cards here that we can play at any time, and these are gonna be one-time use cards as well. And I think I will do that right off the bat. So I'm gonna play the Swedish frigates arrive for the event. Uh, place two Swedish frigates in the naval patrol zone of Tripoli. Now again, I mentioned that I'm gonna to wanna to try to patrol this area so that I um, am able to stop the uh, Tripoli player from being able to gain uh, too much gold at the very beginning of the game. So Tripoli is going to look through their cards and what they could do um, on their turn, they can play a card to gain a uh, Corsair, one, another one of these boats in the harbor of Tripoli. And so I would just play a card 
and um, I, it's not discarded from the game completely, I'd be able to get that back, but then I would just take one of these, put it in the harbor, and that would be my turn. I can also play a card for an event, or I can do a pirate raid, and I will, I think right off the bat, instead of doing a pirate raid or building a Corsair, I think what I'm going to do is another, I guess, kind of popular option in the game would be to play these to, uh, excuse me, play a card to be able to take these out of um, uh, Gibraltar and move them into Tripoli. Uh, that's by playing the um, the breakout card that's moved two Tripolitan Corsairs from the harbor of Gibraltar uh, to the harbor of Tripoli, but they can roll a uh, interception roll, which will will potentially allow them to destroy those. So I think I'm not going to do that. In fact, I don't normally do this necessarily, but I think of right off the bat, I'm going to do a pirate raid, partially just to show you, and then I'll, I'll be able to show you something else a little bit later on. So I'm going to take this card, I'm going to discard this. It's not going to be, again, eliminated from the game. I'll be able to get that later on in the game. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a pirate raid. And what happens is first they're going to roll an interception roll. This is the uh, the Swedish frigates. And the frigates, as you can imagine, can roll more dice than the Corsairs or the gunboats. Um, the bigger ones, uh, the frigates will roll two per, and these ones will roll one per if they're in battle. But we are not doing a battle. We are going to do a pirate raid but they get to intercept first, meaning they get to try to destroy our ships and they're gonna hit on sixes only. That one's a little off to the, oh, hey oh. so there we go. Um, so they roll two, three fours and a two. That will be a whiff. So they will not destroy in a, any of these ships, um, any of my uh, Corsairs. And then I have four of them, so I'm gonna roll four. And if I am going to not attack them, but I'm going for a pirate raid, which means if on a five or a six, if I roll a five or a six, I'm gonna take a gold for every one that I roll. Um, and unfortunately, I did not roll any. I'm a two, three, three, four, so I did not roll any fives. And then they'll just move back into the harbor. Now back over to the Americans. And they're going to, let's see, I've got a couple of really good options here with the cards that I have. Uh, but I think first what I'm going to do is take, uh, I think what I'm going to do is play this early deployment card. And so I'm going to, this says I can take one American frigate from the following year. I guess I should probably put this out here if you're, I don't know if you can really read that anyway. Uh, take an American frigate from the following year track, um, turn track and then place it into any naval patrol zone. So normally this would move out here and I'd be able to take the ship in the next year. But right now I get to early deploy this. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it here to patrol this a little bit more. And that will be my turn. And back over to Tripoli. Tripoli, like I mentioned, has some good options here. And I think what they want to do is they're going to place Three. I'll play this card, and this is a again a one-time card that's going to be discarded from the game. It's Tunis declares war. Place three Tunisian corsairs in the uh, in the harbor of Tunis. So they're going to take three of these, and they're going to place them out here, and that will potentially allow them to uh, do a pirate raid as well later on. But they have to have the card to do this. this is a one-time. <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of this card from the game back over to the Americans and uh, I think what they might do is kind of prep themselves again um, for the following year you know I just placed that card that allowed me to early deploy this ship oh by the way we are in the fall we've each taken two turns so far so I forgot to move that marker uh, place two American frigates in the following year of the turn track order and so I move that ship out to early deploy only to make room for putting two more out there. So that's actually really good for the Americans. We're going to uh, discard out of this game because that was used for the event back over to Tripoli. And let's see, Tripoli is going to pirate raid with all the Corsairs from the harbor of Tunis. And so they'll take this and um, uh, yeah, so they're going to pirate raid from these. So it actually, there's 24 cards in here. Some are going to be good. Some are going to be bad for the time of the game that you're playing. 
I just happened to get some really good draws right at the beginning to be able to pirate right here. And so that since there's no uh, frigates there to intercept, <clears throat> I will take three dice. And again, on fives and sixes. Uh, ooh, bad rolls, bad rolls. Let me just re-roll that. We're gonna cheat a little bit just so I can show you. Um, because that's the last part I'm gonna play to, to show you the game. But what would happen is I now roll two fives, I would take two gold, and then I would move them over to my supply. Now again, there's 12, so once I'm able to get 12 of those gold, um, I would win the game. So as you can imagine, at the beginning of the game, Tripoli is really going to be trying to roll, roll, roll just to get those um, and, and to, you know, to build up these different armies that are going to be pirate raiding, particularly this one in Tripoli. Um, but with the American player, they might be trying to uh, kind of buff up their uh, defenses here to be able to attack Tripoli when they come out to do their pirate raids, but also they need to be preparing for the later game. So that, that kind of gives you an idea of how the game plays out. That goes to winter. Now once you start a new year, um, each player is going to draw six cards into their hand. If they have, um, uh, they have a hand limit of eight cards, so they would have to discard if they have more. And then later on they're going to be able to get the cards back that they've already played. Alright, so let's talk about the art and components here it is. Um, we've got this really long board, which uh, really narrow and long board, which I, I normally wouldn't be like real big on that, but you need a longer coast piece and, and you know enough space to be able to fit all the resources. And it's a two player game. And so more than likely um, you're gonna, you know, either sit across from each other or next to each other. So if you're next from each other, you've got lots of space to work with there. So, so I like it. I like the board, um, all of these custom meeples that you have on here. Uh, the, the box cover I think is a really uh, pretty box cover. And also look how thin that box is because <laughs> Uh, you don't need all, you know, a ton of resources, a lot of it, or a ton of uh, materials in there. A lot of it is just the cards and then the, those meeples and then the tiny dice. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the tiny dice, but you do roll a lot of dice sometimes. And so, uh, it, so it is what it is. And I'm not, you know, opposed to that in this game. So anyway, overall, I like it. Good art and components. Gameplay, does it match up? So... Gameplay is good, no doubt. I think the gameplay is really cool. It's a lot like a you know a lot of those um, two-player war games that I've played. Now I've not played any like really really heavy war games or anything like that. But like um, I guess Watergate, 13 Days, those kind of games where you have you know cards. You're going to play a card. Um, it kind of a multi-use feel to it, which is these aren't really necessarily multi-use, but you're playing it as your action to do different things. And so you might be sacrificing a card that you really like because you need to be able to pirate raid or you need to be able to move your frigates over to um, to a harbor area. So I, I, it's, you know, it's it, those those challenging decisions, I think, are, are what really uh, make this game. Now, I think that early on when you're first playing this game, it's a lot easier for Tripoli to win than it is for America because it is a little bit hard for you to kind of grok what it is you need to do as America, but the, uh, the, 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 in my experience, now I'm not an expert at this game, but in my experience, you really need to try to control what's going on here in Tripoli to be able to do well later on in the game. And that again is a challenge because you also need to be thinking ahead with the cards that you have, thinking ahead, how can I reach the conditions that I need to be able to reach later in the game while also managing what's going on right now? And so that leads me into kind of the biggest point I want to make in, in my in my gameplay thoughts, and that's that you can't just play this game a time or two and be an expert at it or, or be able to have a good opinion of the game, I don't think. You need to play this game over and over again to learn the cards and what they're going to do to know, you know, how, if you're the American player, how to stop Tripoli, uh, if you're Tripoli, how to do well with what you're doing, but also kind of, you know, beefing up your defenses in the areas where America is going to come through and, and sweep through your, your, uh, combat units and uh, there's a lot to it now it's not a heavy game at all like you can play this pretty easily and you know you know the the, the text of the cards really clear everything you need to do it seems to be very clear to me but the strategy is what is going to take a longer time and this kind of moves into final thoughts for me a little bit but the big thing is, you know, I play a lot of different games. Uh, uh, you know, every week we're putting out different videos, playing, you know, games multiple times, and then kind of moving on to the next thing. 
with this one, you, I don't think you can really do that. I think you really need to, to really appreciate this, need to kind of invest more time into it with a player that you can play with over and over again, and then you can both learn the cards. Because not only do you need to know what cards you have, and, and this is for all of these type of games, you need to know what your opponent has as well, because you need to know if I'm gonna do this, are they gonna be able to counter that well? What, are, what could be some reactions that they might have? That's not a fault of the game. In fact, I think that's a, a really good thing about the game. It is, for me, um, a, a bit more of a challenge to be able to play a game like this because we have so many games that we play all the time. Now, another thing to consider, and this is where John was out of, of <laughs> this review. This was not a game for him, for sure, with the dice rolls, okay? <clears throat> you saw it when, when I was playing through that even if you can do things right, right? Even if... Let's say I, I really buffed up my Corsairs in Tripoli, and I'm, you know, um, let's say they didn't have Sweden in there. Maybe they had, like, you know, two of their frigates or whatever. So I'm coming out, and even if they roll poorly and don't take anybody out, I could roll poorly and not get any gold, which is terrible because you've done all of the right things. And, you know, I might have eight dice that I'm rolling and I might get one gold. You know, that, that could happen. And in fact, it did. And John kept up when, when we had played this game. He had kept up with all of his poor rolls. And it was a lot. Now, I think in most of these games, oftentimes that's going to balance out, right? Statistics um, are, are going to be in your favor in the long run. But I recognize there are some people that are just not going to like that about the game at all. For me, I don't dislike it. I think it's fine because I recognize, you know, sometimes you're just going to have bad luck. Sometimes, sometimes things are not going to go your way. That's like real life, right? Um, but we see that in games too. Sometimes just things aren't going to go your way. And I kind of like that. Whereas somebody like John wants to know if I'm putting eight of these in here, whatever I'm supposed to roll, I want to be able to roll that every time. And if not, it can be a frustrating experience. So you need to know that going in, that there, there are some, you know, it's a heavily uh, dice, it's a heavy, heavily favored in dice rolling, right? To do well, you're still gonna have to roll some dice and they're gonna have to roll in your favor, whether you're Tripoli or America. So that is something to keep in mind. And that can be frustrating for people. For me, Rolling dice, I enjoy rolling dice, so that's not a frustration for me, but I recognize there are a lot of people out there, especially if you, you know, uh, play a lot of strategy games where you where you like to eliminate the luck as much as you can. This is not going to be for you. I'll just go ahead and say that. I don't think this is going to be for you. For me, I like this game. I think this game is really fun. I, I, I enjoy playing both sides. I tend to enjoy the challenge of the American players more. It, Tripoli can be, especially if in your first couple of plays and in the early game, it can be just some, maybe some obvious decisions of moving your Corsairs out here and trying to pirate raid or, or pirate raiding from, from Tunis because you want to get gold. That's what you have to do. And so it is a lot of moving ships out there, rolling your dice, moving ships out there, pirate raiding, rolling your dice, a lot of that over and over again, which can be... Uh, it can be kind of boring, I guess, kind of playing that side. But overall, I've really enjoyed that. Uh, anyway, I've, I've enjoyed both of uh, both playing both sides of it. So anyway, I like this game. Don't love it, but my love, my lack of love for this game has more to do with am I willing to put in all the hours and the time that it takes to really appreciate this game? Maybe not, but still, it's fu it's a fun game. So I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. This is one that I will... Uh, if you want to play this game, I will play it, but I'm not going to be like, you know, going out of my way to uh, to make sure I can find people that will play this with me all of the time. There are some other games I would rather play that are in this vein, um, like a, a Watergate type game is something that I would just rather play. 13 Days is a game I would rather play, but that is a personal thing, and I recognize that I can take... I can play those games having not played them in a while and still do pretty well, whereas this one, I think you really need to put in that effort. So. 7 out of 10 for me. If you'd like to get in touch with, with us, you can reach us at, uh, at Mapletown Games, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also reach out to us on our, uh, on our website. That's Mapletown Games. You can go to our guild. That's guild number 3407 at boardgamegeek.com. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Mapletown.
Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meepletown Games and connect with us on the Meepletown Guild, guild number 3407, at boardgamegeek.com. And also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown.